fight Both I'm trying to see what it's like to take me So I roll the dice Look up to no one else But yeah, how was shy yeah. I got real power Hebrew is a lie Experience the Native Americans God shows the people in the Bible We are the Israelites Do you know why that's important to know? You need to know your heritage But what comes with knowing your heritage? That too, but that also means knowing your history. Right. How was your heritage taken from you? By the white man. By the white man, huh? Right. Not just by the white man, but all these other nations as well. They all had a hand in destroying you. But why are the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans are so alluded on saving everybody when all these nations know that's not even a real thing, huh? They all hate each other. See, they, they go to war with each other. They take over lands, diplomatic relations. But black people, we have to save everybody. We have to love everybody. Because they know we're the strongest people on the face of the earth. If we have, if we develop their type of mindset, we rule the world. You see what I'm saying? We have to develop that type of mindset. Go to Psalms 18 and 39. Why did King, go to Psalms 139 and verse 19. You know who King David is? You know who King David is? Why don't you want to say it out loud? We'll say it out loud. The so-called white man is a cancer to the earth, man. 99% of the animals are gone. The ozone layer is damn destroyed. The water is polluted, man. They make nuclear missiles for no damn reason. And just to walk up and down and split atoms, man. You see what I'm saying? Look, he knows. He is, he is, and they destroyed the earth, man. Through their science, through their philosophies, through their, their crazy agendas, man, their plans on the earth, man. They are a cancer to humanity and society, and God agrees, man. That's why King David said he hates them with a perfect hatred. Read what you got. Look at Psalms, chapter 139, in verse 19. Bring it out. Surely that will slay the wicked. What the Lord say? Surely that will slay the wicked. The Lord says, surely these people have to die, man. They destroyed the earth, man. God created the earth and he put them in charge. And, and guess what? Now, now they have repentance for destroying the whole damn earth. That was created for us, man. You know? Oh, God, depart from me, therefore, ye bloody men. These are what, what the Lord said about them. Ye bloody men. They're bloody men. I mean, no, only one nation will kill 400 million people and says God forgave us. Oh, That's a bloody man. Still doing it to this day. This blood is so off the skin. Just look at him, man. No, we teach our kids to love those people. Up at, right. It was taught. How long? Right. Their history was taught. We did not teach our own history. We didn't know our history. We only teach what they taught us. You see what I'm saying? Right. Now we now we know who we are. But why do you think King David said, "Depart from me, you bloody men"? I mean, we in the school systems, the hospitals, man. You see that? We don't. Where they speak against thee wickedly and thy enemies. Take thy name in vain. Right. Do not I hate them. What the Lord says, do, do not I hate them. them. We're supposed to love them. Do not I hate them. Why do we still love these people? What do, I mean, Martin Luther King said what? Love these people, right? We've been doing that for over 50 years, and you have not progressed in this country. Right. right. You see that? And he regretted it. Why do you, why do, King David said, I hate them, huh? How about we try hatred? How about, they say hate, hating is not the way. Let, let's start hating these people and see what happens, man. We're going to start destroying them. You're gonna start being with your own people. Right. They're gonna start building up in this society, man. Right. Huh? Okay. We built that. You see that right there? We built it. But guess what? We started loving them and now we don't own it. Yeah, they still won't pass that green light and that red light we built Because we don't hate them. That's the problem. You know? You know they hate them, oh Lord. They hate thee. Right. And not and if not I agree with those that rise up against thee. Right. I hate them with their perfect hatred. What the Lord say? I, I hate, hate them with, with their perfect hatred. David said, I hate them with the perfect hatred. Right. Nobody hated the so-called white man more than David. David seen them as one of the slaves and take off their damn head, man. I hate them with the perfect hatred, man. When I see him, I see somebody that's whipping my damn grandfather, man. I see somebody, I see a damn lawmaker oppressing my people, man. When I see him, I see Joe Biden. You see that? Real hood? 
I hate them with their perfect hatred. I count them my enemies. I count them my enemies. So why don't we count these other nations our enemies? Why don't we just stand together and fight against our enemies instead of trying to bring our enemies in with us everywhere we go? I mean, didn't they destroy the Black Lives Matter movement, man? Huh? We lost in our own land. We're speaking upon it right now. We're teaching our people. Go to Revelation chapter 7, verse 3, until the, until the elect is sealed. Right. We have to keep going out here, teaching our brother, hey brother, come back to your, come here, your nationality. We got to keep talking to our rebellious men, our rebellious kings, until we find the elect and the elect is sealed. Go right. to Ezekiel chapter 9, verse 4. Because once the elect is sealed, we go, we get up out of here and the Lord's about to destroy America, man. Right. What's going on, brothers? What's going on, family? Y'all got two seconds here about the words of the Lord? Two seconds. Come on, brother. We have to keep doing this until we find your way. What you got, kid? The book of Ezekiel, chapter 9, verse 4. Pick it up. And the Lord said unto him, Go through the midst of the city. You what? Go through the midst of the city. The Lord said, Go through the midst of the city. And what? Through the midst of Jerusalem and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that that be done in the midst of us. Trying to find those that hate this place just as much as we do. And I want to do something about it. Don't want to come out of their sins, man. Don't want to kind of just serve God and repent, man. And that brother like how he wants to do it. Brother in the red shirt. Come learn salvation, brother. Come learn how to get out of America. Come learn how to stop getting oppressed, man. Hate this damn society. You know? And to the others, he said, in my hearing, go ye after him through the city and smite. And what? And smite. The Lord told his angel to go through the midst of Chicago and smite. To go through the midst of Baltimore and smite. New York and smite. And kill, man. The word smite means to kill. Why does the Lord want this angel killing people? Because you can come to America and customize your gender. You can select your player, right? You, you left Argentina and you came to America to start a new life. And the first thing to ask is, what gender do you want to be? Do you want to still be a man? Or do you want to be a woman? Or do you want to be a man? We have over 81, I think America has over 81 genders. And they said, before you come to America, and before you can become a U.S. citizen, what gender do you want to be? I think it should be a they. You look good as a they. And they tell, they, they, they tell your children to be a they. You see that? This place has to be destroyed by God. This place has no hope, man. Right? What you got? Let not your eyes spare. The Lord said, let not your eyes spare. The Lord said, don't let your eyes spare. Right? To the, to the damn Israelite woman that want to be in a blonde hair, man. To the man that think you're a woman. Don't let your eyes spare. To little babies with grumpy faces, that's Edomites. You see that? The Lord said, don't let your eyes spare upon these people for what they have done to our people, man. Go to Isaiah chapter 19 and verse 21, man. Go to the book of Job chapter 21 and verse 30, man. Let not your eyes spare, you know. Neither have you pity. Stay, stay utterly and young, the Lord said, slay utterly old and young. Young babies gotta go, and old men gotta go. I mean, even in Sodom and Gomorrah, you have the children banging on the door for lasciviousness, for homosexuality pleasure, man. What's going on, brother? Hey, hermano, hermano, dos minutos. Escucha la palabra de Jesus Christ. Dos minutos, mi hermano. See that? Mis hermanos don't believe in Jesus Christ no more, man. All right, wait, wait on. Both maids and little children and women, but come out near any man, but come not near any man upon whom is the mark. And the Lord said, come not any near any man to whom is the mark, man. So we're trying to seal the elect. We out here trying to seal our people, man. Brother with the nice jersey. Brother with the nice jersey. Brother. See that? And that's why our people got to be destroyed, man. Because they don't want to hear the words of the Lord. They want to do their own thing. But that's okay. Lord willing, he has another chance to repent, man. Read what you got. No, read the other one. Yeah. Isaiah chapter 14 and verse number 21. It reads, prepare slaughter for his children. What the Lord says, prepare slaughter for his children. 
for the iniquity of their fathers. That they do not rise, nor possess the land, nor fill the face of the world. Do you believe in Jesus? Let's go talk about Jesus. I, they want to talk about Jesus. They give you a damn God that they don't believe in, man. Do you believe in Jesus, sisters? I told you. See that? Yeah, you can't make this up. You can't. Sis, do you have two seconds to talk about Jesus real quick? Two seconds. Because Jesus says something about black people in the Bible, but these Christian churches are not telling it to our people. So we have to tell our people what Jesus said about black people in the scriptures. Go to Matthew 15 and 24. Let's see what the Lord said about our people and the things that we go through in America. Go to Revelation chapter 12, verse 9. Because these scriptures need to be read at church. Right. They're, they're too busy passing the collection plate, but they're not reading the words of God. Read what you got, King. Revelation chapter 2 and verse number 9. I know the works and tribulations. The Lord says, I know thy works and tribulations. The Lord said he knows our works and tribulation in the society. Right? He knows we got to get up seven days a week to work for the so-called white man, man. He knows our checks are being garnished. He got damn child support, man. He got court cases, jury duty, right? Father not in the household, man. He knows the ways and tribulation we go through as a people. We want and poverty. And what? And poverty. The Lord knows we in the hoods. The Lord knows we just struggling to get by, man. Right? We don't. But there are rich. The Lord say, but, but there are rich. Why did the Lord still call us rich as a people? Go to Romans chapter 9 and verse 3. The Lord said, I know your poverty, but you're rich at the same time. What does that mean? Remember, you only talk to our people. Read Matthew 15, 24. Look at Matthew chapter 15 and verse 24. Right? But he answered and said, I am not sent. He says, I am not sent. But unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. When he was speaking these words that I know your tribulation, poverty, but you're rich. He's talking to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Not everybody, not everybody's in poverty. Not everybody broke. Not everybody going through tribulation, man. Only the people on this side are being oppressed all over the earth right now, man. And the Lord said, I know the things that you go through, man. Well, I know how they're still hanging your black boys and black girls and how they 30 people, damn, 30 people in two weeks went missing in Cleveland, man. And, and they look just like us. The Lord knows these things. But he also tells us to how to get out of these tribulations. Do you want to know how? Because we've been, Malcolm X been trying to look for the solution. Martin Luther King was looking for the solution. Marcus Garvey was looking for the solution. Only the Bible, the word of God has the solution. How do we get out of this uh, oppression that we're in today? Do you all want to know? Go to Joshua 22 and verse 5. Go to, go to uh, the book of Jeremiah chapter 19 and verse 3. Right? How do we do these things? How do we get out of this oppressive state that we're in today, man? Go to Amos chapter 3 and verse number 2. We got to figure this out. Read this, King. The book of Jeremiah chapter 19 and verse 3. And say, hear ye the word of the Lord, O kings of Judah. Oh, who? O kings of Judah. Our black men are the kings of Judah. They don't know that, though. They think they niggas. Black African American, the Lord said, O kings of Judah. You know what? And inhabitants of Jerusalem. Right. Thus said the Lord of hosts. Right. The God of Israel. The God of who? The God of Israel. Behold, I will bring evil upon this place. The, the which whosoever heareth, his ear shall seek. So we're telling our people that there's evil upon this place right now. But how do we get out of this oppressive state? How do we get out of the being uh, 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 being terrorized on the earth, man? Do what you got, King. This is the solution, sis. This is for you. It's Joshua chapter 22 and verse 5. You know. But take diligent heed. The Lord says, but, but take diligent heed. Our princesses and our kings have to take diligent heed. You know? To do the commandment and the law. Well, sis, I thought you wanted to know how to get out of it. You put your kids over the word of the Lord? Damn. She said, my kids are ready to go even though God's word is coming out. But I'm a Christian. Dang. See that? Hey, King, kind of slant this a little bit. All right? They can see. Right? That's crazy. They don't really care about getting out of this oppressive state. They really just want to live two seconds, moments longer in America. They don't really give a damn, man. They just really want, they want to hear the words of the Lord for about two seconds to say they got the, you know, the, the scripture of the day, man. But they don't really care about the things that our people go. Sis, do you care about black people in America? Do you care? 
Yeah, like you care about the things we go through in America, like the killings and our, and our women going missing. You care, right? Do you have one second to talk about it? Just one second? Come back up here, two seconds. Because we, we believe that I found the solution. And we want to share with our people what that solution is to stop being oppressed in America. All right? You believe in the Bible? You believe in God? You know God talks about the things we go through in America? Go to Lamentations 5 and 3. You ever been to church? I can guarantee you they've never read these scriptures to our people, man. All they do is collect, you know, collect money. They read John 3.16. But the things that our people go through, even all the way down to how we look, how our people look, is in the scriptures, man. And they haven't read this. Read what you got. Lamentations chapter 5 and verse 3. Get out. We are orphans. We are what? We are orphans. And fatherly. And what? And fatherly. Who's known? What nation of people on the earth is known for not having a father in the house? And our women just having babies and just raising them as single parents. Who's known for that? Is that the Chinese man? Are they, or is this so-called white man known for not having fathers in the household? Oh uh, no, she sounds hell no, what are you talking about? Right? Alex is always at home with his children. Right? What about our fathers though? Are they known for being in the house? Oh no, right? Read that again. We are orphans and fathers. We are what? We are orphans and fatherless. Our mothers are as widows. Our what? Our mothers are as widows. Why? Because our mothers are as widows, man. Her husband's either in bed or in jail. See what I'm saying? We are we have drunken our water for money. We have what? We have drunken our water for money. So sis, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, I got you. I got you. Now, who does this sound like? Who's drinking? Who's paying for water? Who's fatherless? Who, who, whose wives uh, don't have any husbands in the household? Or men in the households to lead their children? Who does this? Who is, who is God talking about? What nation? Would you, would you say it's more like our people? It's all people, right? Huh? We babies of a nation? What do you mean? We were given the name African American. Yeah, they gave us something. And guess what, sis? That's why we up here to give the so-called black, Hispanic, and Native American man back their heritage in the last days. Because you're not going to learn this anywhere else. You're still going to be learned as you're African American from Minnesota. When God said your heritage goes thousands of years deep. That you're supposed to be able to teach your children. And they're supposed to carry that on to their children. You see the East Indians and the Chinese man, they pass down their heritage. What do we pass down more than blunts and torque? That's why we're teaching our people who we are. Go to Sirach 1711. These are the words of God that was given to our people 5,000 years ago. That's why this Bible is only exclusively for our people. That's why anywhere we go in the scriptures, it's only talking about us. Read what you got. It's the book of Sirach, chapter 17, and verse 11. Besides this, he gave them knowledge. He gave them what? He gave them knowledge. What are we giving the sisters? He gave them knowledge. In the law of life. In the what? In the law of life. For inheritance. For what? For inheritance. For an inheritance. We inherited the laws of God that our people broke thousands of years ago and now we just forgot. We forgot about the laws of God. That's why we live in a disobedient state. We do whatever we want to do. Whatever feels good to us, we do. Everybody has a moral code. The East Indian man has a moral code that he follows. We don't have a moral code. We just do what that we think is right. We try to be like the so-called white men and white women all the damn time. Right? When God said we're the greatest people, but we have to follow the laws of life. Do you know the laws of life? Do you know any laws that God commanded our people? Okay, the fruits of the spirit. The fruits of the spirit is a result of what happens when you keep the laws of life. So we need to know the laws of life so we can get the fruits of the spirit. You understand that? So we're gonna, so we're gonna teach you some laws that our people broke that got them put into slavery. See, this wasn't just a random thing that just happened. God, there's a divine entity that put our nation of people in slavery. Huh? Were they greedy? Our people were greedy. But they just didn't keep something. Though. I'm going to show you. What did Deuteronomy 14 and 8? They wanted a lot of things. But we could have got all those things if we just kept God's commandments. Right? Read what you got. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 14, and verse 8. Check it out. And the swine. And the what? And the swine. Because it divided the hoof. Yet choose not to cut, it is unclean unto you. You know what swine is? Pig, right? The Lord said we cannot eat pig. 
to this very day, you still got blacks in the South eating pig, pork, ham, swine, chitlins, bacon, right? And any other thing that has to do with pork, right? They, 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 they just eat pork all the damn time, man. Didn't the Lord just say, don't eat pork? Who was he talking to? Go to 2nd Maccabees 7 and 2, that's true. Go to 2nd Maccabees 6 and verse 29. But you know something about our people, you know something about the Lord? Go to Sirach 4 and 28. Just because it was forced upon us, doesn't mean we had to eat it. You know, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to show you why. Read this, read this, King. See, we have very strong, we have very strong roots. And our people are very mentally strong. Read this, King. Say, Rachel, right, 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 right. strive for the truth unto death. What the Lord say? Strive for the truth unto death. The Lord says, strive for his truth even into your last dying breath. Right. Right. And the Lord shall fight for thee. And the, and the Lord shall fight for thee. Because it just wasn't in slavery that they tried to force pork on our people. That happened during the Roman Empire, and that also happened during the time of the Greeks. But let's see what our forefathers did during these times. Read what you got. The book of 2 Maccabees, chapter 7, in verse number 2. And it reads, and it reads, but what of them that spoke first said thus, for what is, verse 1, it came to pass also that seven brethren with their mother were taken. Right, so there were seven brothers with their mother. The father wasn't there, it was seven brothers with their mother. Right, read on. And we're compelled by the king against the law. Against the what? Against, against the, the law. law. Yeah, the so-called white man try to make us do something against our laws. We don't. To taste swine's flesh. To do what? To taste swine's flesh. We and we're tormented. And we're what? And we're tormented. We said no even to the point where we start to get tortured. We don't. With scourges and whips. But one of them that spake first. Wait, 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 wait. What? But one of them with scourges and whips. With scourges and whipped. With blood. With scourges and whipped. Who's known for getting scourged and whipped on their back? You see that? With scourges and whips. This is nothing new under the sun. Look. But one of them that spake first says thus, What would it still ask to learn of us? We are ready to die. What the Lord says, We are ready to die. So sis, one of the little boys said we are ready to die than what? Rather than to transgress the laws of our father. So he said, we're well, ready to die than to transgress the law of my God, man. So even when they was forcing it upon us, hey, guess what? We got to die for God's laws because that's your heritage, man. That's something no one should ever be able to take, uh, take from you, man. That's something you can teach your children and your children teach their children, man. Right? You know what? Then the king being in a rage commanded pans and cauldrons to be made hot. So our people used to die for God's laws. Now our people, they don't care about God's laws. They don't care about who they were. Go out and say one and three. They do anything they want to do in the society, right? Then they say, you know what? F it, I'm black, right? I'm a color of a crayon box. And they don't even question why. That makes no sense when we have the greatest heritage on the face of the earth. You see what I'm saying? Read what you got there. It's the book of Isaiah chapter one and verse three. You know? The ox knows his own. So an ox is a dumb animal. The ox knows where he comes from. Read on. And the ass, his master's crib. A donkey is another very dumb animal. They know where they come from. But who? But Israel. But who? But Israel. These people. Look at look at these people on the sign. These people. But Israel. Do not know. They don't what? Do not know. These people don't know who they are. They don't know their true lineage. The past 400 years. Read on. My people do not consider. You know what? Do not consider. These people don't even think about the history past 400 years. They don't even care. They want to get rich in America. Men want to chase Keisha, and Keisha want to chase wealth. And everybody wants to be like Cardi B and Money Bag Yo. You know? A sinful nation. And what? A sinful nation. And people later with the nickname. We fill with sins against God, man. God commanded us a law, but all we do is break his laws. That's called a charge. What happens when you break the so-called white man's laws? You get all types of charges. You get prosecuted. You get court dates. They give you, they, they assign you an attorney. They give you a Miranda rights, man. They put you in jail. Bond. You know what? What happens when you break the laws of God? You get slavery. You get oppression. You get generational curses. 
long term punishments, man. That inherit that your kids will have to inherit because of your evil doings. Right. But you have an opportunity, along with the rest of these people that want to hear the words of the Lord in these last days, to be saved from the destruction that's gonna come from Yahweh Shah comes back on earth, man. Right. Because do you know that the Lord coming back? Do you know what he's gonna do when he comes back? He's gonna do a lot of killing, man. And a lot of people don't know this because they, they talk to the they talk to the Christian pastor and Christian pastor tells them what that Jesus is coming back to jump rope and you know hold hands with people, man. The Lord's coming back to doing a massive killing on earth, man. Do you think it's a reoccurring thing already kind of happening? Go to Ecclesiastes one and nine. These things are nothing new under the sun. Ecclesiastes four and sixteen. Ecclesiastes one and verse nine. Go here. We're the generation. We're the, yes, we, it's called regeneration. We were already on the earth before. We've done these things before. You see what I'm saying? We've done these things all over the earth before. And now it's time for us to come back before the Lord comes back. Who else you got? It's the book of Ecclesiastes. Hold on, sis. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. See that? It's starting to get too hot now. Satan had to come and try to take away the word. Uh, who, who else you got? Now, let's answer your question. It's the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 1 and verse 9. Yeah. The thing that have been, it is that which shall be. The thing which have been, it is the thing that which shall be. Meaning, uh, uh, whatever happened before is going to happen again. You know? And that which is done, it is that which shall be done. Whatever happened on the earth before, whatever happened on the earth before, it's going to happen on the earth again. You know? And there is no new thing under the sun. So the Lord said there's no new thing under the sun. Do you ever hear history repeats itself? Because the same spirits are back on the earth doing the same thing again. Right? Read what you got. Ecclesiastes 4 and 16. The book of Ecclesiastes said the 4 and verse 16. There is no end of all the people. What the Lord says, there is no end of all the people. There is no end of all the people. They may say all the Israelites are extinct. They're still on the earth and they just call themselves by a different name. You see, we do. We're very reproductive people. We don't. Even if all that have been before them, they also that come after shall not rejoice in him. So there's no end of all the people. So we're on the earth again. But the, this time is, we have another chance, or one last chance to get right with the Lord. One last chance. How do you give him the strength to say, no, this is a family, that's how it's supposed to be, he right. that to a white woman, why would you take me away from a man, how do you strengthen a man? How do you strengthen a man? Yeah. I got you. Go to 1 Kings chapter 2 and verse 1. Right, how do we strengthen a man? They do that on purpose, you know? Joshua chapter 2 and verse 7. They do. It's an agenda. It's set up like that. Yeah, it's set up. It's set up. We understand that. But how do we strengthen a man per se? We have to tell that man to return back to his God first. Learn order, learn discipline, and learn what it means to even first be a man. And I just read specific parts of the Bible right. that, that we learned all this. Exactly. You see what I'm saying? That's why we keep going to scripture to scripture all over the Bible saying the same thing. Now, I'm going to show you what it means to be a man and how do we strengthen the man. First Kings chapter 2 and verse 1. Now the days of David you know. This is King David. God's anointed, God's chosen, talking to his son, King Solomon. Hold on. That he should die. And he charged Solomon. And he charged who? And he charged Solomon, his son. His who? His son. Let's read about what King Solomon looked like. Read with this kid. The book of Songs of Solomon, chapter 1, and verse number 5. I am black. When he says, I am black. Read it again. I am black. King David's son, King Solomon, says, I'm black. Hold on. But come we. O ye daughters of Jerusalem, as the tents of Kedar. So Solomon was a very dark-skinned man. And now King David is about to tell him how to rule a whole empire. How do you rule a kingdom? What do you have to do? I go the way of all the earth. Be thou strong, therefore. What do you say? Be thou strong, therefore. We have to come out here to tell our men to be strong. Right. And how to be strong by reading God's words. You know? And show thyself a man. And do what? And show thyself a man. And keep the charge of the Lord thy God to walk in his ways. So do what? To walk in his ways. You have to tell that man to walk in God's ways. That's probably the strongest thing you can do. Denying your lust. Denying your temptations. Huh? 
that's called discipline and denying temptations, right? But our men don't know how to deny temptation because they don't know uh, one thing about discipline or order. You see what I'm saying? That's what we have to return back to the Lord. You know? To keep his statutes and his commandments. And his what? And his commandments. Commandments teach against fornication. It teaches against uh, uh, hating your brother. It teaches against being envious, man. What things you can or can't eat. How to keep your body in order. These are the commandments that God set up for our men and our women. But if they don't know these things, they're subject to do anything. You see what I'm saying? Right. And that was perpet perpetuated by who? The so-called white man and white woman. They take away your history. Now you don't know these laws. Now you depart. Your strength is your strength is crumbled, man. Read what you got in Joshua 2. It's the book of Joshua, chapter 2 and verse 7. Get out. And the man pursued after them the way to Jordan unto the forge. Joshua 1. This is the book of Joshua, chapter 1 and verse 7. Get out. Only be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded thee. So the Lord said, only be strong, never be weak, only be strong and be courageous to do all of the law. So for our men to be mentally strong, they have to know God's laws and return back to the Lord. And for our women to be mentally strong, they also have to do the same. So sister, for your children, we want you to be strong. And how do you be strong, sis? By returning back to the Lord. Now we're going to bring you some commandments, we're going to read you some commandments that's going to help you be strong and that's going to help teach them be strong as well. Uh, I got you. We're going to give you one commandment, okay? What up, Deuteronomy 22 and 5? Because you're halfway there, sister. You, you're already, you're almost there. Because you say you believe in God, right? Now we need to do it according to knowledge. How to do it. Read that, King. There's one commandment for you. It's the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22 and verse 5. Get out! The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. Because in the Bible, the Lord, when he sees the black man and black woman, he doesn't see nigga, hoe, or spick. He sees king and princess. That's it. If you're anything less than that, the Lord doesn't want to deal with you. So if you're a princess, the Lord, in his mind, you have to dress like a princess. You know what that means? You have to have a dress. Because princesses wear what? Dresses, right? Right. So if you're a princess on the earth, according to God, you listen to sister? You listen to this? What do you have on, what do you have to have on according to God if you're a princess? A dress, right? Well you, well, you gotta be covered, right? You don't gotta be like the damn, the damn uh, East Indian woman you won't show your damn two eyes, right? But you know, you gotta wear a modest dress because your body is for your man or your husband. That whoever you lay down with. Read this case. The book of 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 9. Yeah. In like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel. And what? In modest apparel. So you have to have a modest apparel, right? Righteous clothing for the Lord. You said men's eyes? Think about it like this. Exactly. Go to Proverbs, but it doesn't make it easy when the greatest and the few most. It doesn't make it easy. You listen to this? Go to Proverbs chapter 27, verse 20. Proverbs chapter 27, verse 20. Get out. Hell and destruction not, are never full. As the grave and destruction, they never get full. They never get satisfied, right? So the eyes of the man are never satisfied. The eyes of men are never satisfied. They always want. They always want. But now you're right. Go to Job 31 and 1. The man has to be very disciplined. But it doesn't make it easy when the most beautiful women on the planet decide to wear nothing. They walk around not wearing anything. But you walk around and you know you look good and you show that to every man. It makes it very hard to be disciplined when your sister, she's not even helping you keep the commandments. But your sister is supposed to be on a righteous dress because she has a man, but she's still showing everything to another man. And now you may talk to her and that man say, hold on, that's my girl. Now you put your man in a predicament just by what you wear. Just by leaving the house in a certain manner, your, your man got to fight 20 dudes because they're trying to talk to you. Well, you, all you have to do is put on a dress and they wouldn't even have looked at you like that. You feel what I'm saying? That's why the Lord said our women got to dress appropriately because the Lord already know what he credits you. Read this. Proverbs chapter 2 and verse 1. Proverbs chapter 2 and verse 1. 
This is the book of Job, chapter 31, verse 1. You know? I made a covenant with my eyes. The Lord says, I made a covenant with my eyes. That's what men got to do. They got to make a covenant with their eyes. Because like I said, in this society, let's say we go down to Atlanta. You may see a man that's actually a woman. And you may see a woman that's actually born a man. You got to be careful out here. You see that? You, don't, you just don't know in this society. You know? So that's why we say you got to make a covenant with your eyes, but you're right. Our men have to be disciplined, but it's also on our women as well to not burden that man with that. You see that? So for the Lord, you have to wear a, a modest dress for the Lord, man. Are you willing to do that for God if you love him as a princess? To hold yourself to a higher standard and not to just look like every woman on the face of the earth? Don't you want to be, yeah, don't you want to be different? Are you? If you're different, a man should be able to tell he's different just by looking at you. He shouldn't be. He shouldn't have to guess. You see what I'm saying? But if they're looking at everything, what do you mean? If their eyes are never satisfied, they're gonna look at anything. No, and we're talking about in lust, like in lasciviousness, just to lay down with you. If you have a dress on, a man's not just gonna try to lay down with you. He's gonna try to come to you in a certain appropriate manner. And, tr and wear a dress. As your church dress is modest? You sure? I mean, I can't not continue to be You got, you can, sister. I gotta take you See, now we gotta, we gotta bring out the damn auntie, the damn uh, Instagram page, man. You know? We gonna show you, we, all right, we gonna, we gotta, we gonna show you an example of a, we gonna show you an example of a righteous dress. Look, 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 that's a righteous dress. You have a shirt on with the dress to hide your, your cleavage, right? These sisters, see, they, do, they, they doing their thing, man. Okay. Right? You see her sister? Still popping. But I'm going to still holler at her because she's still fine. Huh? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but you're not going to come say, hey, yo, ma, come over. You're not saying that. You're going to be like, oh, damn, she got a dress. Let me hold the, let me hold the door open. Right? Let me, let, me, let me see how she, let me see what her mind is, man. Right? Huh? 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 Okay, that's here? Yeah, we're just to find out. Now, yeah, that is. Like, how many of our sisters got righteous dresses on our fringes, man? Out there in Minnesota. You haven't seen a lot. I went to school in Minnesota. I haven't seen one. Yeah, you have a lot of Somalians. And, and they do their thing, right? Because they know their heritage. This is your heritage. This is your thing. This is our thing. This is what our people did. And guess what? What a picture at? Literally. What does she have on? What is this? What, what is that that she got on in the back? That's literally your heritage. Don't try to run from who you are, man. This is who you are. Huh? No, they wasn't forcing dresses. Yes, that's what we did. That was our thing. Our, our, our woman, Lord, yeah, bring it on. That's the beautiful Judith is. You know who Serena Williams is? You know when she plays tennis, she gets hot? She gets hot when she's playing tennis. You know what she had on? She had a dress on. And she's the greatest female athlete. We're in a dress. See that? What you got, Kim? The book of Esther, chapter 15 and verse 1. And upon the third day, when she had ended her prayer, she laid away her morning garments. You know what? She laid away her morning garments and put on her glorious apparel. What was Esther, Queen Esther's glorious apparel? She's a queen during the Occamated Empire. And she comes from the tribe of Benjamin. And she's a queen. And she put on her glorious apparel. Did she put on some tight some uh, tights and leggings? As glorious apparel. Like, when she came her, her husband's the king, huh? Yeah, no, she didn't do that, man. Her husband's the king of 127 provinces, man. She's not coming before him with some tight jeans. Huh? You can't work in that. What do you mean you can't work in that? Like in, they, in they, they make you wear certain things that work. You can't. You can't work. You tell your boss, look, this is my religion. This is what I did. You know, this is my, this is my, this is what I do. This is my culture. They can't say no. And guess what happens if they say no? You're going to be a very rich person. Losses. See that? So, sister, there's no getting around keeping these commandments. You got to keep God's commandments. You got to wear a dress and your daughter got to wear a dress according to the Lord if you are truly a princess. 
Go to Deuteronomy 7 verse 6. Because these people are going to be God's greatest people on the face of the earth. Not just because they were born it, because they look like it, they act like it, they talk like it, they walk like it. Man. Right? Read this, King. Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 6. For thou art a holy people. For thou art a holy people. For thou art a holy people. Do you know what the word holy means? The Lord said you are holy people. What does that mean? Holy means to be consecrated or set apart. You are a set apart people. Meaning anything these other nations do, don't do it. You do it better than them. Right? Meaning you see everybody just in, dress, in a dress on? No. So why would you not do it if you're a set apart people? You're not like them. You're better than them. See that? Look at them. Wearing pants and all types of manner of just other clothing, man. But we're all holy people, we don't. Now, our holy people are to the Lord that God. All right, take a fly, sis. Take a fly. Out of the way. Oh, hold on. Thank you. Know, look into that and keep these commandments, sis. All right, keep those commandments. All right. All right. That's what we got to do in these last days. You, you too, sis. Get home safe, man. All right, you just make a thousand excuses, man. Oh, why she, yeah, she's gonna make a thousand excuses on why she can't keep God's commandments. Again, Latinos, Latinos, escucha. All right, we just got Joel two and one. Go to Ezekiel three seconds. And we are, we're not here to convince anybody. We are here just to warn our people. What's going on, brother man? How you doing, King? Right? Hey, you see yourself on the side over here, according to your father, Judah. All right, hold on, brother. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Bro, we gotta get you a Judah and Roman too. Right. Come on, brother. Now you love me, you know. Go to Ezra, go to Ezra chapter 9 and verse 20. Damn, brother. And even when the days are old, man, all kings gave their daughters unto their sons, man. And their sons unto their daughters that have families. Alright, read that. Look at Ezra chapter 9 and verse 20. Yeah. Uh, Ezra chapter 9. Ezra chapter 10 and start at verse 11. Brother, 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 what's going on, King? I'm an atheist. Come on, brother. I'm an atheist. Hold on, brother. Hold on, brother. I'm an atheist. Let's talk about it. I'm an atheist. Okay, brother, we, we, we deal with atheists, brother. Come up here, brother. Yes, we deal with atheists. Come on, brother. Yes, brother. Clap, clap, clap. You ain't gonna clap. Come on, brother. You can't clap. You're gonna nod your head. That's not a clap. Brother, brother, hold on, brother. What's, What's going on, King? What's going on, man? What's up, bro? You see yourself on the sign, man? What's you got, bro? According to your father, what's your nationality? Where would you say you come from? You tell me. You out here. No, actually, I don't know your lineage. I don't, I don't know. All right, why don't you call yourself an African-American? No, I call myself black. Black? Yeah. Like, like the color of your shirt? Yes. Do you look at your skin. And look at the color of your shirt. Is it the same? No. So no, I, no, no, no. See, you're trying to be sleek. A mask? No, 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 no. Is it? Is it? No. All right, so you said black, right? Correct. Nationality, what nation do you come from? Is black a nation of people? Okay, so I get what you're trying to say. I mean, right? I didn't, I'm not trying to say anything. You got the mic, so you're going to win. I'm asking a question. No, okay, so what I'm saying is, is an African-American comes from Africa. Okay. I was born here in America. Right. right. Therefore, I'm black. But what nation is black? What land is black? You know what nation is black. I ain't being funny, but What you, nation is black? Come on, dog. Where is the land of black? You know. Is it there? America. How about that? That's the land of black? You tell me then, since, 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 since this is what we're doing. But I'm just asking questions. I'm just saying, you know. No way. You know what nation is black. What, what, hey, what is it, brother? You know, brother. Brother, you don't know, brother. Brother, you know. Uh, brother. We're going to teach you something. All right. No, no, no. You Hold, know on. This, Wait, go. Hold on. Hold on, brother. Go to do it over 20 minutes. Right, so you win it. What, what do you mean winning, brother? I it's, wish I had a mic. It's not, a, com it's right not a competition, bro. Right. We're not here to debate you, King. You got me on camera. Brother, we're not here to debate you. Okay, go ahead. We're here to teach our brothers. Okay, teach me. We love you, King. Teach me. Read that in Deuteronomy 28. All right, come on. Yeah, Deuteronomy 28. Yes, brother, teach. Bring it up. Sisters. All right. Put us up on the path. The Lord said it will happen for these people along this side. The Israelites, right? Read on. All right. If thou will not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, if you don't listen to God, your heavenly Father, read on, to observe, to do all His commandments and His statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses, all these words, all these curses. So if let's say you have a contract with the so-called white man, what happens if you break his contract? Okay, so hold on. You talking about Old Testament? Or you talking about New Testament? 
We read out the Old Testament. Exactly. So it's the New Testament, right? Right. Second Timothy three sixteen. Right. Yeah. We're about to read out the New Testament. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's Therefore, something. What he's talking about is under the Old Testament. What does that mean? That means Jesus came, therefore we're under the New Testament. We're not under the New, the Old Testament. We're not under the Old Testament? No. What does the word Testament mean? I'm not going there with you. I'm asking. No, 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 no. What I'm going, what I'm saying is, you got the Old Testament, you got the New Testament.